<laughs> Hello and welcome back to another video. Yes, once again you find me on the roof of my van. Now a little while ago I moved my solar panel further back and I fitted it on a tilting system. This gave me lots of room up front. Enough room in fact to fit a top box and I thought to myself, yeah I'm going to get a roof box up here and I can store even more stuff. But then I thought to myself, do I, do I really want to carry even more stuff with me? And if I did fit a roof box up here, the chances are I'm just going to fill it with stuff I don't really need. So I scrapped that idea and I thought I'll make better use of this space by fitting another solar panel. This solar panel is 305 watts. If I can double up on that, that's going to give me 610 watts of solar on the roof of this tiny little van. Absolutely amazing. But the problem I've got is I don't actually have enough room up the front. I've had a bit of a measure. I'm about that much too short. So what I need to do is actually extend my unistrut roof rack so I can move this solar panel further back giving me enough room up the front to fit another one of these and if i'm successful at getting 610 watts on the roof of my van then i'm going to max out my battery pack but more about that later on in the video first thing i need to do is see if i can actually move this panel further back so i can make room for another one of these 305 watt victron solar panels <laughs> right let's get down before i fall down and see if i can extend my unistruct roof rack Okay, so I've been onto the internet and I've found this company called Unistrut Direct. They do everything to do with Unistrut, as the name would suggest. And I've managed to get some of these Unistrut extenders. And this is literally a piece of Unistrut that I'd left over once I'd changed the solar panel system on my van. And so I've cut some lengths of this off, as you can see, and fitted it to this Unistrut extender. So now all I've got to do is slide this over the unistrut that's already on the roof of my van and it's going to extend my unistrut by that much. And that's all I need to get that solar panel to move back far enough so I can fit another one in front of it. I know it's not pretty, but who's going to see it when it's up there? Might have to give it a coat of paint if it actually works. wonder how strong this is going to be. Seems quite sturdy. Right, let's get my ladder out and hopefully I don't fall off it again like I did the other day. Shame I didn't get it on film. <laughs> The one thing I like about this Unistrut system, it is like a big boy's Meccano set. You can buy so many different attachments and fittings for it. You can pretty much build what you like out of Unistrut. Now, I know it doesn't look very pretty, but then my van's never going to win any prizes for being best van in the show, is it? <laughs> Let's face it, it's not the prettiest looking van out there. Um, so there you go, it looks pretty messy, really. But I'm going to try and paint all of this later on. I could probably hang off of that, that's really strong. I'm quite pleased with that. So all I've got to do now is move the whole solar panel right back to the edge of here. It does kind of overhang a little bit, but not by much considering I've got that spare wheel on the back as well. And also I've just realised if it comes back far enough, I'll be able to fit lights up here, like brake lights and side lights on this part. It'll be further enough back. Um, which would be an extra safety feature, I think. I'm going to look into that, fitting lights up here so I've got high lights. Because my van doesn't actually have a high brake light. <laughs> like some of these vans, they have a brake light up here in the middle. I don't actually have that on here. So if I can fit lights up the top, brake lights, side lights, like I say, it'll make my van more visible in bad weather. You see, a lot of these vans have these brake lights up the top there. I don't have one of them. I want one. Well, actually, I'm going to have two. When that comes further back, I can put more lights up. That's a bonus, isn't it? Right, let's see if I can move that panel back further. That really does look a bit ugly up there, doesn't it? I might have to put something to fill that gap underneath. <laughs> But I can most definitely put lights on the end of that. So let's have a little measure up the front and see how much room I've got now. See how much extra space I've got and whether or not it is possible to fit another solar panel on the roof of my van. Mm. Hopefully it is. All right, let's probably take measure. I think I left it up here. Well, I've managed to find my tank measure. All right, if I remember rightly, this is about it's about five foot four inches long, or in imperial terms, 164 centimeters. So five foot four. 
Now I've got to measure this, see how much room I've actually got left. Just about. So I think the solar panel's gonna have to overhang that front cross member just a little bit. But the main thing is it will fit. Yeah, it will rest on there. It's gonna be close, but I think we can do it. But like I say, this uni strut here, the, the, solar, the new solar panel is gonna to have to fit on top of this and be slightly forward. I haven't got a problem with that. That's perfectly fine. All right, so I'm gonna carry on, I'm gonna bolt this down there, I'm gonna leave that permanently there, and then get online and order myself another Victron 305 watt solar panel. So here we are, back at the workshop, got the panel, so all I need now is find a strong lad to help me lift it up onto the roof so I can mark where I'm going to put the brackets to hold it to my uni strut. Where's Adrian? <laughs> um, I'll tell you, you go yeah, I'll go there. Okay. Yep. Now to fix a solar panel to my roof rack or my uni strut, I'm going to use these L brackets that I've got from Screwfix. Now they do stand a little bit proud, so I'm simply going to modify them. And in good old Blue Peter fashion, here's one I did earlier. So I've simply cut the top off. Now that is a really nice bracket, and that's going to be fixed to the solar panel like that, and then bolted down onto the uni strut. And this is exactly what I did when I fitted solar panels to Rebecca's van. So do go check out Rebecca's channel, I'll put a link to that video up here. The next thing I need to do is actually paint these before I fit them because they are only made of mild steel and they will go rusty. So whilst the paint dries on these, I'm going to use this one that I haven't modified yet and uh, put it up against the solar panel and use it as a template to drill all the holes all around the solar panel whilst these ones dry. So let's go and find some paint, get some paint on these. Plenty. Right, so I'm laying the solar panel flat down on this workbench, and if I put my template against it like that, I now know that the, the bottom of this bracket is, also, is level with the bottom of the solar panel. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? I'm going to line that up with that mark, like that. Do the pilot hole first. And then go in with the bigger hole. Lots to grab. Now, before I drill the next hole, I'm actually going to put a bolt in there. So I'm going to put one of these in. Hopefully. Ooh, that's a nice fit. Just going to poke that through like that. That hold the bracket in place whilst I drill the second hole. That's it. That's it. And that's it. Perfect. All I've got to do now is now free. So now the paint's dry on my little brackets. They look pretty good, but it doesn't really matter because nobody's going to see them anyway. I'm going to use these six mil bolts to attach these to the solar panel. And then we can bolt the solar panel to the uni strut. There we go, really simple, but effective. Just got to try and get the nuts in. <laughs> A bit fiddly to say the least. 
Aye. We've only got four of them to do. Yep, Let's keep going to the end, keep going. Sit. I'll undo the cable of tyres when I get up here. Okay. Too easy. <laughs> he says, so all I've got to do now is bolt it down and then plug it in and we'll see how much power we get out of it. Now to connect these two panels together, I simply used a wire piece, a wire splitter. I've not wired them up in series, I've wired them up parallel to each other. So if one of these is sitting in a shadow, the other one will still work. All right, now the sun has just come out, so I'm gonna go outside and see how much power I'm getting out of these two panels now. I'm really pleased I made this decision. Rather than putting a top box up there, I think putting a solar panel on your roof, the benefits of that far outweighs putting a top box up on your roof. Without breath. Wow, this has really made a difference, more than I thought it would. Now usually on a day like this, I mean it's quite cloudy, I'll just turn around so you can see the sun. It's a very cloudy day, usually with my one 305 watt solar panel, I'll be lucky to pull about 130 watts on a day like this, on average. But I'm just watching my meter on my Bluetti app, and it just peaked over 400 watts. Obviously there's clouds going by and it's going up and down as the clouds go past. It's just gone right down to 180 now. But that's still more than I would have got if I'd only had that single solar panel on the roof. But to see this peak at 400 watts, I'm really pleased with that. I've got to say, I'm, I'm really pleased. It has, obviously, it's doubled my capacity. Now, you may well be asking yourself, why am I bothering putting more solar panels on the roof of my van? What's the purpose of this? Well, the simple answer to that question is, I want to get away from using LPG. I want to see if I can go through the whole summer cooking on just purely electric. After all, I've got an induction cooktop, I've got an air fryer, so do I really need to have LPG in my van? And that's the whole point of this experiment. So now I know my extra solar panel actually works, and it makes a big difference, I'm gonna go ahead and order an extra battery for my system. Now, for those of you that don't know, I'm actually using a Bluetti power pack in my van. I use a Bluetti AC200 Max, and I've got one B230 expansion battery fitted to my Bluetti. So, uh, I guess to make the whole system complete, I need to order myself another expansion battery. So that's what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> now I know the solar panel actually works, I'm really excited. I'm gonna max out my Bluetti AC200 Max by fitting two expansion batteries to it. Yeah, why not? Okay, so here it is. It's only taken two days to, to arrive, so I'm really impressed with Bluetti's, um, what's the word, turnaround. <laughs> so this is the B230 expansion battery to go with my AC200 Max. So I'll just remind those of you out there what I've actually got. Take a look at this underneath my bed. Apart from the packaging, I've just taken everything out of. <laughs> just chuck that up there. So this is the main unit. This is the AC200 Max. This is the heart of the unit. That controls everything. And under here, behind this net, I've got my expansion battery. And that's why I want to fit another one, because then I'll have the complete setup, which will allow me to run lots of different experiments. I really want to put this system through its paces, purely so that I can either... Um, recommend it or not recommend it the jewelry's still out on that but either way like i said earlier i want to try and eliminate having lpg in my van so the more battery power i've got the more solar i've got on my roof the more chances i've got of achieving that so that's why i wanted to order this extra battery pack just purely so i've got the complete system now you can actually use this as a standalone battery. You can charge it independently of the AC200 Max. You can also draw 12 volts from it via this cigarette lighter socket. And it's also got a couple of USBs. Um, I think, yeah, one's a USB-C at 100 watts. The other one's a USB-A at 1800 watts, according to the front of this. But the main thing, the main purpose of this is to connect it up to an AC200 Max. And you do that via this huge plug here. And it does come with a cable, so this cable 
connects up this to the main unit although you can charge this independently via this socket here you can charge it into, into a 240 volt wall socket although the charger doesn't come with it that's the only thing you have to buy the charger separately if you're going to buy this independently of the main unit however i've ordered a charge enhancer and as far as i'm aware bluetti is the only company that make these so what this does it will allow me to plug into my alternator and charge this unit via the alternator like that it also comes with extra leads for solar as well so this charge enhancer allows you to charge this battery independently of the main unit either using solar or your alternator so that's what i'm going to do because the output on this is only i think it's about seven amps it's quite low input 10 amps output oh eight to eight point two amps sorry maximum which isn't a lot really considering the size of the battery but i guess it's that low because it has to go from 12 volts to 51 volts the battery in this is a 51 volt battery so i'm kind of guessing that's why it's so low so what i've done i've got i've actually got three of these now so i've got one connected up to the main unit and one connected up to that expansion battery so i've got a third one connected up to this expansion battery so when i'm driving my alternator will be charging all three batteries independently and the way i do this is through a voltage sensing relay so what i do i cut this plug off and by the way bluetti don't recommend you do this this is just something i do I cut this plug off and then connect this cable to a voltage sensing relay that way when my engine is running the voltage sensing the voltage sensing relay kicks in and delivers power to my charge enhancer bricks and like i say i've already got two of these so i'm going to fit a third one now hopefully that doesn't overload the system i don't think it will because the maximum they draw is 10 amps and my my voltage sensing relay is rated to 140 amps so i'm only going to be drawing 30 amps even though i've got three of those hopefully it works so here's my voltage sensing relay and you can see i've got three plugs coming from that and these three plugs are going to plug into my three charge enhancers and i'm just using some 3m sticky back pads I'm going to stick these on there like that so they're stuck on there and then hopefully this is going to be strong enough to hold these up against that bulkhead there but, um, there we go it does look nice I think I have to say these these three M stickers are super strong. I mean, once they're on, they are freaking on. There's no way that's going to come off of there. There you are. There's my wall of Bluetti charging enhancers. So now, when I drive, all three of these will be charging each individual battery bank from my alternator. <laughs> ah, brilliant! Absolutely fantastic. Right, let's clean this mess up so there you go there's my two expansion battery packs now installed into my van all i've got to do is plug them in um yeah these cables are huge i don't know how i'm gonna do this uh maybe twist them around like that so there we go my rcd my two tubs or well, four tubs and there's my expansion battery pack fits really nicely under there wasn't planned it's just how it all turned out so quite pleased um that it actually all fits and it fits so well as well look how snug it is all right let's put the lid back on and then uh we'll start the engine up and see what we're getting <laughs> it's working look at this let me just move this curtain out of the way so you can see these this one's charging you can see the lights are flashing up there the top one's charging as well you see the lights are going and according to the app the actual battery bank is getting at 157 watts now this won't show what these are getting because it only shows what is actually going to the main unit and to prove a point if i unplug this you'll see they will stop flashing there you go so now they've stopped but the app is still saying 174 watts 184 now going into the main unit 
So if I plug these back in, you can plainly see that these are getting charged independently from the uh, the main battery bank. Oh, there you go, there they go. So this one's now flashing up and down, which means it's charging from the alternator. And if I move the bungee out of the way, you can see that one is as well. So there you are. So according to this, if that's getting 150, 50 amp, 160 amps, watts rather, then so are these as well. So you are an absolute success, I would say. So now I've got 610 watts of solar on the roof and I'm charging each battery bank 160 watts-ish when I'm driving. So what's that in total? Three lots of 160 watts. So when I'm driving my van, that equates to 480 watts. Sounds a lot, but if I calculate that, if I divide that by 12, that is 40 amps, not bad. So I'm getting 40 amps going into both all three battery banks at the same time. So that's well within the parameters of my voltage sensing relay and my alternator. My alternator, I upgraded back a couple of years ago to 190 amp. So my alternator should be able to handle that perfectly well. Now, once again, I'd like to say a big thumbs up and thank you to Paul for showing me around Energy Monkey. And I will put a link to their website down below in the description of this video, purely as a thank you. And if you're in the Gloucestershire area, then do go check them out. Or you can order stuff directly from them online via their website. Now, as far as the Bluetti power pack system is concerned, I will update you throughout the summer to let you know how I'm getting on not using LPG in my van just to see if I can go completely LPG free by using this setup. I'm pretty sure I can. Now, if you are interested in how I installed my Bluetti into my van, I'll leave a link to that video up here. Hopefully you found this video mildly entertaining, slightly informative. If you did, then please do give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra for now.